Hello and welcome to Investing Confidential. Stay tuned towards the end of this video. I'm going to show you one of the most disturbing and disturbing charts I have seen this month related to the U.S. But first, let's talk about Powell. He's speaking in front of Congress the next couple of days. He's at the Senate today. I mean, this guy's a joke. I mean, he says he's data dependent, but if you listen to half the stuff he says, he's dovish. Okay, we know he's dovish because he's in the pockets of the private equity funds, Carlisle, Blackstone, whatever. He he he, he would love to pivot. Okay, all well, you guys, he would love to pivot, but he's not. He can't. Okay, he's data dependent. Okay, he's also. I think he feels his legacy's on the line, and there's no way that this guy is going to be able to pivot. But he wants to. He he he's sticking to his two percent target, which is insanity. Okay, but this is who we have. Okay, and that's it. So let's go through it here. Bottom line, rates are going higher. Okay, end of story. Powell said it. The data says it. Okay, so let's let's look at some of these headlines. So first, and I quote: "The Fed is prepared to speed up rate rises if warranted by data." Okay, well, that's obvious. The economy. This is all Powell stuff. The economy strength suggests peak rates will be higher than previously anticipated. Okay. This is the same moron who told you that inflation was transitory. Now he's backtracking on what he said three or four months ago when he tried to pivot. And you know he now we know he did try to pivot. He's, there's no chance, but he did. Okay. Again, another quote: "Inflation is moderated, but progress is likely to be bumpy." Here again, he shows that he is a duff. Okay. Powell again: January hiring, spending, and inflation data have partly reversed earlier softening trends. Another quote, some reversal of recent softening could reflect warmer weather. Now he's a weatherman. Okay, the guy's a joke. The breadth of revisions to previous quarters suggest inflation is running higher than expected. This is the key one right here. Okay, this is the key quote right here. This guy, okay, again, I'll say it again. This is the guy who told you inflation was transitory. He's, he's partisan. Okay, he's politically partisan. He is in the pockets of private equity, but he has no choice, okay? They, and then we talk about the U.S. data. U.S. data, as we have discussed, is misleading, not accurate. Not that it's fake, but you can't rely on it anymore. If you, if you trade on data, you're going to lose money, okay? Absolutely lose money. And what's happening now is the, the quietly, and this is very, they're revising all this data. And he says here, breadth of revisions, to previous quarter suggest inflation is running higher than expected. Any person with common sense could make that decision based on the real data. But obviously, we get kind of fake data, misleading data, and then we got to wait for revisions. And this is what it's telling us. Okay. So rates are going higher. Okay. Fed for March looks like now 50 basis points. I think I said to this for the first, I think I was with the first one to come out a couple of weeks ago and told you guys that we're going to be looking at 50 basis points rise in March. 100%. Look back in my videos. The probability of 50 basis points is rising fast, as you can see here. Okay. It's the, 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 all of a sudden, people are changing their tunes. Now we got, okay, why? Unit labor costs. Look, unit labor costs are rising. Okay. These are, again, revisions. This is revision to already fake data that came out the labor costs are rising this is very dangerous is fed if the fed is data dependent this is very bad okay now you got data that came out today manheim used car data obviously manheim used car data is more reliable than any of the any of the data that the us government comes out us car used cars are going higher prices are higher that's going to factor in to the inflation number why are they going higher i have no idea Okay, the, the, the car companies can be playing games. I have no idea. But this is going to factor into the inflation data. Inflation is sticky. I've been saying that for quite some time. It's come down, but it's sticky. It's not going down anytime soon. What does this all mean? Again, what are the, what are the market implications? The market cannot go up in this type of scenario. It cannot. Okay, Recession probability. Again, Wall Street economists... Wall Street economists does not want a recession. They, they do everything they can to, to steer you away from that word, but it's rising fast. They finally have to give in. It's to me, it's been baked in for a while. Okay, I don't I don't believe the data anymore. It's like China. Okay, we've become China. The data is not believable, but it's gonna happen. Okay. The if the economists are gonna have to, you know, just pull the plug and they're gonna have to let the recession word out. Okay, because it's happening. 
Okay. And, and then the job data. Okay. The job data is what the White House and Wall Street say. Oh, the economy is fine. The economy is fine. Sorry. Okay. As we can see here, the challenger data, which is more accurate than the government data, is telling us that based on job cuts, okay, that these artificial jobless claims are about to spike. Okay. We've had huge amounts of job cuts. And, and the experts are telling you, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. The people are getting hired. That's false. They're not getting hired. There's a lot of people that are unemployed. They want to stay unemployed for a while. They think the economy is strong, so they're just going to relax. We're going to see jobless claims spike. Okay? Also, the data says, according to the people that matter, which are the people running companies, there's no there's no labor shortage. Okay, They're, they're telling us there's a labor shortage. No, there's no labor. In fact, there's there's, there's the opposite of a labor shortage right now. These are these are these are people that run companies on earnings calls. Okay, what they're also saying is that profit margins are shrinking. What does that mean? That means lower earnings. That means lower valuations. Not a great not a great environment for stocks. And then you've got the big numbers: housing. Okay, housing is leading indicator, as I told you, but is also affected by this data. Okay, there's going to be no recovering housing, folks, anytime soon, and this is why. The affordability of housing, U.S. housing, is the worst in history. Okay, repeat it again. The worst affordability for U.S. housing in history. You, you, you can't, there's no way to, to, to sugarcoat this. Okay, then you've got more data that delinquencies are rising, especially young, young people. So people are borrowing money for cars, not paying for the cars. We got almost a trillion dollars in interest on credit cards. People are defaulting on those. How do you buy stocks in that background? And we haven't even reached peak rates. Terminal rates going to 6%. The two years going to five, and maybe maybe even six. And once that happens, I would not I would put all my money in guaranteed two-year bonds and let it ride it out the next couple of years, okay? But this is not the worst case scenario, okay? Now I'm going to show you the worst chart I have seen in, in quite some time, over a little month or so. Okay, now we're going to get a lot of charts every day. This is the U.S. CDS. Okay, CDS is our credit default swaps. These are the things that people like Michael Berry and, and the Big Short uh, used to short the housing market. How do CDSs work? You, if you buy CDSs, that means you're short. It's the opposite with stocks. So you buy CDSs to go short. Here is the U.S. CDS. Okay. U.S. credit, the best in the world, supposedly. Okay, U.S. CDS spiking. These are people hedging against the United States. They're hedging themselves against the United States. They're betting, or they're betting, or they're hedging that the U.S. is going to have problems, financial problems. Okay, we talked about this before. We have a trillion dollars in interest payments. Probably next year when we'll reach that number, as we keep rolling our debt over at double the rates that we had it before. Okay, this is bad, folks. This is bad. And if there's a reason to own gold and, and assets outside the U.S., it's this chart here. So again, the background is not good for stocks or bonds in the short term. So if you're an investor, be very careful out there.